everyone, this is Troy. Uh, I want to talk about faith and specifically about faith that's the size of a mustard seed. When I was growing up, I would hear this verse all the time where Jesus talks about having faith the size of a mustard seed. Um, and there's two occurrences uh, that I can think of. One's in Luke 17, 5 through 6, and the other one is in Matthew 17, 20. I'm going to go ahead and read Matthew 17, uh, 20. It says, And he said to them, Because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. When I, when I heard this verse growing up, I always thought, I always put so much emphasis on the mustard seed. And in my mind I thought, okay, so Jesus is he's setting the standard. The, if, you wanna, if you wanna do great things in the kingdom of God, and you wanna do great things for the Lord, you have to have this mustard seed sized faith. But the only problem with that is, I feel like I was taking the illustration too far, and I think it's easy to do that. We can't really measure faith by a mustard seed standard. There's no, there's no like saying, okay, you have three mustard seeds of faith, I have two mustard seeds of faith. That's not what he meant. He was using an illustration to make a point. And the way we know what his point was is by the question that the disciples were asking him. They were saying, Lord, increase our faith. And so when Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain to be moved into the sea. What he was saying was, even with the small amount of faith that you have, even if it's the size of a mustard seed, this tiny little thing, God can still use you to do great things. And I think the emphasis is, is less on getting to this, this size or this ratio or whatever of faith that, that we can measure out and more on whatever little faith you have, God's going to use that if you'll, if you'll begin to walk in it. In Romans 12, 3, Paul talks about how God has given each of us a measure of faith. And specifically in this verse, he's, he's talking about, and he was talking about before this, the gifts of the Spirit. But I think that we can also apply this in general to, to our faith in God and in His Word. Because I don't believe that we all have the same amount of faith, or we all start out with the same amount of faith. God is more interested in you using your faith and walking in faith than He is the measure you've been given. And no matter what that measure is, if you're using it like a muscle, when it's used, grows, your faith is going to grow. And I think that's why Jesus used the illustration of a seed, is that, yeah, it might be small right now, but God can use it where it is right now. And as you use it, it begins to grow. Even if you're doing amazing things for the kingdom of God, ultimately, it's not you who's at work. It's the power of God. It's His power, not ours. So if we're walking in faith and we're seeing things happen, we need to keep in mind that we're not the ones who are ultimately in control. It's Him, it's God who's doing it. And He's using us because we're willing to believe His Word. Romans 10, 17 says, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the Word of Christ. When we believe the Word that He's spoken, we're walking in faith. When we respond appropriately to what He has said in obedience, then we're using that faith that we have, no matter how small it might be. I'm reminded of Gideon in that he was this man that God called to lead Israel to victory in war and, yet, and to lead them to freedom. And yet Gideon was the most unlikely person to be a leader because he was the lowest of the low as far as his status went. But the reason God, I believe that God picked him was because even though he had this tiny amount of faith, and we see that because he, he asked God for a sign that, that it was actually God telling him to do these things three times. You know, not just one sign. He, did, he needed multiple signs to know that it was God saying the words, but as soon as he believed that God was the one who said the words, he did it. I think that goes to show that he had this tiny amount of faith, and probably a tiny amount of faith in his own abilities too, because he, he wasn't qualified. But it didn't matter to God. It didn't matter that he had this great faith. The only thing that mattered was that when God spoke to him, he was willing to believe the word and he was willing to use the faith that he had. I want to read Romans 10, 8 through 10. It says, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is the word that we read about earlier in verse 17, 
where it says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. The word is that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is the gospel. If you've never taken your first step of faith, if you've never used that tiny amount of faith that you have been given, no matter how small it might be, if you've never taken that first step, I want to challenge you to take it right now. And the way you take that step is by believing that Jesus Christ is Lord. By confessing that with your mouth and believing it in your heart, that God raised him from the dead. And when you do that, the Word of God says, you will be saved. And if that's where you are right now, and you decide to take that step, there's no better place that you could be. And as soon as you take that step of faith, you're going to begin to see that your faith is going to grow. Because when you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God responds, and He gives you that salvation that He promised. But if you are a believer, and if you've taken that first step of faith, maybe, maybe even a long time ago, but you feel like now your faith is stagnant, I challenge you, go read the Word of God. Go seek the Lord in prayer and see what He's wanting to say to you today. And then when He begins to speak to you through His Word and through the Holy Spirit, I just challenge you to, to take that next step of faith and to act out of and respond out of obedience. And if you do that, you'll begin to see your faith grow.